Are you making things out of aluminum and want to improve your build quality? This video is my experiment with anodizing aluminum. The first step in getting your piece ready for anodizing is sanding. Here I started with a 220 grit. After doing this for a little while, I realized that linear strokes work better than circular strokes. Using a piece of glass under the sandpaper will allow you to be sure that the piece will remain flat and uniform. After the 200 grit, I switched to wet and dry sandpaper. I started with 400 and then stepped my way up from 600 to 1200 to 2000 grit. Between each step, I rinsed the pieces and wiped down my area so that it wouldn't cross-contaminate between each grit. I also stuck the pieces under a microscope to see what was happening. Here is the surface at 400 grit. Here's the surface at 600. At 1200. And at 2000. And you can see it's really starting to smooth down. I sanded the four faces of my two pieces each differently. This is the 800 grit. And this side I did to 1200. You can see it's a little more satin. On the next piece, I did this face at 2000 grit. And then the reverse, after the 2000, I polished it with some rubbing compound. You can see it got pretty smooth. Under the microscope, you can see that Almost all of the marks from sanding are gone. Now that the surfaces have the finishes that we want, we need to attach wires to the pieces so that they can be submerged into the baths to be anodized. I'm using aluminum wire that I found at a craft store. It's important to make sure that the attachment points are nice and snug, otherwise you don't get good electrical connection and the wires will over anodize and start to dissolve, which is a problem that I ran into in early tests. When making the long S-shaped hooks, be sure that they're long enough that your piece is completely submerged in the etchant and in the anodizing path. The last step in the prep is cleaning. I rinsed the parts one last time after the sanding and then wipe them down with some acetone. This will help degrease them and get rid of any fingerprints or oil or marks that might show up in the final surface of the piece. And finally, I use some isopropyl alcohol to wipe off any residue that may have been left behind by the acetone. For my two baths, I'm using 100% lye mixed to 2% for the etchant and battery acid mixed to 15% for the electrolyte. The first step in actually anodizing is to place your pieces in the lye etchant. Hook the pieces back up to the wires and then submerge them in the etchant. I hung mine from the side of the bucket which seemed to work very well. I etched all my work for 30 seconds. It didn't take long, maybe a few seconds before the aluminum started to bubble vigorously. After the 30 seconds were up, I took the pieces out of the etchant and rinsed them with distilled water. All the water I used in the whole process was distilled water. After the etchant and back under the microscope, you can see that the surface is matte and dull. Wanting to understand what was happening chemically, I used litmus paper to test the etch and the electrolyte. You can see that the lye etchant is a strong alkaline with a pH of around 13. while the sulfuric acid solution has a pH 
of around one or two, which is why the rinsing between the steps is so important as to not dilute the pH of each bath. For my cathode in this project, I'm using two one inch wide strips that I cut out of this lead sheet I found online. With the work now suspended in the middle of the bath from the hooks I made, I attached the positive lead to the hook and the negative lead to the lead cathodes. I turned the power on with the current limiting set to zero and set the timer for one hour. With the power on and the current set, the anodizing should begin. Bubbles should start to form on the negative lead cathode. I get the best results with current settings that cause just a bit of a fizzing sound. To keep the anodizing bath agitated, I'm using a magnetic stirrer that I made from an old computer fan and some neodymium magnets. With these sample pieces, I found my best results came with setting one amp for one hour at about 20 volts. After your hour is up, rinse your parts thoroughly so that they'll be ready for the dyeing process. The anodizing is done, and if everything's worked, you should have grown an oxidized layer of about one thousandth of an inch thick. I had intended to try both fabric and metal dye, but decided that using the metal dye would give me more information about the quality of my anodizing. I found the metal dye online. I followed the directions mixing the solution of the metal dye. I made 300 milliliters, put that in a beaker on a hot plate that I kept at 130 degrees. I also moved the part around and stirred the solution with the part as to try and get the best even coverage. Most of the parts were in the solution for about 10 minutes. After the dyeing was complete, I pulled the parts and did one last rinse with the distilled water before the sealing process. The very last step is to seal the parts. I soaked mine in boiling water for about 30 minutes. And here they are, the finished samples. These are the very first two that I did. You can see there's little imperfections in the surface but the dye took very well, so I'm assuming that the anodizing also went well. On these first two, I didn't do any sanding. I just cleaned with the acetone and isopropyl alcohol. So you can see that the surface is pretty even, but also lusterless. I sanded a bevel in one of those samples and then put that under the microscope. I was able to determine that I grew about seven ten thousandths of an inch of anodizing by measuring the difference between the two planes of focus from the bottom and the top. The last two samples are the ones that I sanded. This first face I sanded to 600 grit and the back side to 1200. The banding is from a failed dye time test. This face is the 2000 grit. The uh, holes, the pitting, came from trying a copper wire, which did not work. And this surface is the 2000 grit and polished. And again, that pitting, I think, is from that copper wire. And also higher amperage which I think was not good. Overall, I am very happy with the results. I hope you found this useful or interesting. And in case you were wondering, through most of this, I was listening to the album Crush by OMD. Well, thanks for watching. And you know about all the clicking and the liking.